All right, that's the generalized gravitational formula. The generalized, the formula we're dealing with electricity with our electric charges is a whole, looks a whole lot like it. So the, the electric force, a different constant. Uh, this K right here, I, I sometimes write K sub E, sometimes I write K sub C. So K sub E, try that again, the lowercase k. K sub E, K sub C, or if I'm feeling really slack, I'll just write K. This is known as Coulomb's constant. Or that too. So that would be the C, the E, the electrostatic constant as I believe that was Ellie just said it. Electrostatic constant. All right. Except we're not dealing with mass this time, we're dealing with charges. Q1, Q2. Divide by squared times Q1 times R subscript 2. All right. If we want to put the vector piece into it. The electric force on charge one from charge two would be Ke q one q two over r squared r two. So that's the formal the, the formal presentation of it. Uh, for the most part, when you're dealing with the electricity, and we're not going to get into really sophisticated math, but if you're dealing with it, the two approaches are play very very strict adherence to the math. and the directions, proper directions will come out of it, or think through the directions and then just find magnitudes. When I was in graduate school, I was in South Carolina, and I also was, I taught in South Carolina, so I had access to uh, the proposed guidelines for South Carolina schools. And one of the requirements that was in the proposal, did not make it into the final draft, quite somebody caught it, was express the electric force in terms of the gravitational force. Which would not only let you graduate from high school to South Carolina high school, but it would also get you a Nobel Prize. What they were looking for, I believe, was just noticing the similarities. They're both over R squared relationships. All right, let's do a plug and chug and say goodbye to the round head. Bye, Dr. Fox. there and I got a proton there and they are two centimeters apart. What is the force on the electron from the proton? So force on electron from proton. All right, so first off, the direction. In which, which way is the force going to be acting on the electron? Which way will the force act on the electron? The electron will be towards the proton. Yep. Why? Um, because opposite charges attract. Yep, absolutely. Okay. So that's what I meant by thinking through the direction. So now all I'm going to do, so that is the force on the electron from the proton. And I keep making the electron positive, it is not a positive electron. Uh, by the way, what is a positive electron called? Such a thinking does exist. It's represented by E positive. Um, that's not a, no, that's an atom. I don't know why it's a This is an anti-electron. Uh, it's called positron. Positive electron. If you read sci-fi, the positronic brain is something that shows up in various places. Artificial intelligence, positronic brain. I don't think, I think that's just a 
sci-fi gimmick. Does that say force E negative P positive? Here? Yeah. F E negative P positive. The E negative P positive is are the subscripts. The first one is the force is acting on the first one, caused by the second one. Mm -hmm. So now we'll just make that way positive. Now we just plug and chug. K, oh, I should probably share what K is. Yeah. Is it 9 times K to the 9th? It is. Eight point nine nine. if you want to take it to three significant figures. And if you want to take it more, then look it up. It's all I can ever remember. I'm not even writing it. Uh, Nine times ten to the positive zero? Yes. Okay. Or the calculator, nine E nine. And the units would be Newton meter squared per coulomb squared. Unlike big G, which is Newton's meter squared per kilogram squared. Would it still be the same unit for the nine times ten? For yeah, you know, yes, it's the same unit. This is the, the quick and dirty. This is if you want to take it a little bit more accuracy. Or if you want to take it one more step in accuracy. Uh, speed of light is 2997929. I always forget the 345. Not that. Speed of light. C squared times mu sub naught something's off there. Oh, 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 oh. wait, no, that's the problem. That's the epsilon sub naught. So if you want to actually calculate it, C is the speed of light. That is a set number. It, the powers that be have said, we are going to make this the speed of light. Uh, mu naught is 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7. Uh, units are not particularly important here, but Tesla meters per man here. And then, so you can work that out. Uh, and come up with an exact value for, for at least a far more specific. However, more time than I need to spend on it, ninth, that's 10 to the ninth, is sufficient. All right, so the force, I have nine times 10 to the ninth, Newton meter squared per Coulomb squared, times the charge of an electron. 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. Coulombs. Charge of a proton? 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. Coulombs. They have the same charge? Over 2 um, centimeters, sorry, 2 centimeters squared. All right. Now, we want to have some nice unit in the end, so let's convert that to meters. 0 0.02, is it? No, 0.02. 0.02. 0 0.02 meters squared. Point seven six times ten to the negative twenty five newtons. And in the positive direction. Why? 
why was it okay not to put the negative sign for the charge of an electron? So the charge of an electron is negative. What would the negative have done? Change our direction. But we already know what the direction is because opposites attract. The minus sign does alter directions. The minus sign goes in there if you're playing very strict adherence to the math. But if you've already thought through the direction, then I don't need to, the minus sign is in, the, the negative up front. Would it be right if we didn't include the plus sign in front of the answer? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Then somehow you're indicating it to the right. If you don't put a plus sign there, it's assumed to be there. All right, so, but this thing right here, we had that souped up. How much charge was on that? I mean, what's, 10 to the negative 19th, obviously incredibly small. What is the charge of that? Any idea, gut, gut feeling? A coulomb is the base unit of charge of, of you know, of, it's the SI unit of charge. Curious. Microcoulombs. So that thing is probably on the order of, you know, uh, 10 to the negative 6 coulombs, which is a microcoulomb. This gives you some idea of relative nature. If you if this thing had a charge of a coulomb on there, then uh, we probably someone's probably gonna die. A coulomb of charge is big. All right, questions there before I throw one more problem at you. Problem that unfortunately messed up a bunch of people in the 152 class. Sorry, that makes it sound more dramatic than it was. It was a test question that too many people missed. Hey, but we're this class. That's absolutely. I have an electron here, I have a proton here, and I have a proton here. If you know the answer, please don't board it out. I want to know the total force on the electron. And these are two centimeters apart there and then two centimeters there. So the question is, what is the total force on the electron? Uh, most of the math has already been done over here. So it doesn't require you pulling out a calculator, really. If you have it, just give a quick you know, hand in the air when you have the answer. Is that, was that a quick hand in the air or was that a almost? Looks like people are zooming in on it. The, the most common answer that they got, unfortunately, in that particular class, they put the negative sign in there so that they had a negative value here. And then they did it for this side, they did it for that side, they were both negative, they added them together, and they got negative whatever the twice that is. As a number of you already saw, it's zero. This is getting pulled this way with 5.76 times 10 to the negative 25th newtons. It's being pulled this way, 5.76 times 10 to the negative 25th newtons. Total is zero.
the, again, what I meant by think through the directions. So if they were different, would you minus the smaller one from the bigger one? Yes, and the force would be in the direction of the bigger one. Mm -hmm. As in, oh, as you did strict adherence with the map, or <laughs> the direction oh, would be whichever way is positive. So to the right is positive. That would be a positive force. That's a negative force. And then, and then when you add them up, okay. it's zero. All right. Questions before I ask a philosophical question. Velocity, here it comes. I have a universe. And it was good. Into it, I put a proton. The proton's there sitting all by itself, fat, dumb, and happy. And then I introduce an electron. What is going to happen to the electron? It's going to come together. All right, which one's going to move more? The electron. Why? It has less mass. Okay. How does the electron know the proton exists? There's the philosophical question. How does the electron know that the proton even is there in order to be attracted to it? Very serious physics question of 200 years ago. The proton is slightly charging the area around it, which is then attracting the. What's it charging around it? There's nothing there. It's a universe with two objects. It's possible that you're visualizing the correct answer, but the way you worded it, no. If you walked into this room, and we were all being very quiet, if someone walked into the room, would they know that any of us were here? Why? What would they what would they sense? Our energy. Our what? Energy. Uh, um, in a sense, depends on what you mean by that. Well, I no, not not talking psychic, okay. anything like that. <laughs> if someone's standing behind you and you're you can't see them, would you know someone's standing right behind you? Yeah. You would feel right. it? You don't, but Jonathan would? I mean, you would feel something. Like, it's not like, it's, it's, I don't want to explain it, but you would know somebody behind you. Like, I, I think what you normally, you feel a little bit of body heat, I think. And also, the sound would be a little bit different, because somebody was there to block some of the sound coming towards you. Similar to this, it's not but it's not picking up smell or sound or heat or anything like that. Physicists tried to figure out what, what the proton did because they figured that whatever the electron was sensing was there before the electron even showed up. So they made up something. And because of the fact that it's still being studied 200 years later, they happen to be correct or seemingly correct. So, the proton is giving off something. I sometimes refer to them as electric pheromones. I am probably the only person who would refer to them as such. But they're giving off these things that are going out equally in all directions. And this is known as the electric field. And what the electron senses is an electric field. It has no idea the proton is there. It just goes, wait a second. My spidey sense is tingling. There's an electric field going that way. 
Let's see who's at the other end. So the electron will move opposite the direction of the electric field. A proton, if I put a proton here, it senses the electric field and says, uh, you know what, I'm going in this direction. So does um, the electron have a field as well and then they interconnect together? Yes, they do. So the electron has an electric field and we'll go for a different color for that. Are they both called the same thing or? They're both called electric fields. The difference between them is that the proton gives off an electric field and electron negative charges will take so the electric field is going towards the negative charge. So realize what's going on here. I know opposites attract and light like repels, but I can also explain it in completely different words. If I have a positive charge here, I have an electric field going away from it in all directions. If I have a negative charge here, I have an electric field going towards it. If I have a positive and a negative charge, well, I'll have two electric fields that are combined. In any of these cases, if I put if I put an electron here, it will I know it's attracted to the positive charge, but it goes opposite the direction of the electric field. In this case, it's going to be repelled by the negative charge or go opposite the direction of the electric field. Here, it's attracted and repelled, or it goes opposite the direction of the electric field. So the set of rules is, first off, it's a vector. The electric field goes away from positive and toward negative. Negative charge. goes opposite direction of external electric field. Positive charge goes same direction. Better wording is it's forced opposite, forced same direction of external electric field. So the positive electric field is attracted to the negative electric field? 